in this video, I want to share with you what is on my phone, my phone setup. Something that gets me overly pumped is having a really functional phone setup. It's useful. It makes me productive. It makes my life easier. It makes my days better. The only way we want a phone to be. I'm going to walk you through the pages of my iPhone home screen, how I put them together, the apps that I use that make my life better. We're covering it all. So we're starting with the very first thing on my phone, which is, I think it's called the today view on iPhone. I don't really use it as a today view. I just use it as another way to access the things that I need quickly and easily. On this page, I have a Notion widget that shows all of my favorite pages. These are the pages that I use most frequently in Notion. So we've got things like my weekly reset page, which take me to my weekly reset checklist, my intentional thinking page, which has all of my journal entries. Then below that, I have my Readwise widget. So this is an app that helps you to remember the highlights that you make from books that you read. I read a lot of books. I love this widget because it just surfaces all of these quotes that I've highlighted before and I get to resonate with them once again. Reading something once just doesn't really do it. Reading something once, reminding yourself of it regularly, taking action on it, that's when things get internalized. Now we are moving on to the home page of my phone. When it comes to my phone, I don't really care about things being minimal. I care about things being functional and I just want it to make my life better. I want it to be a tool that makes my life easier. And as you can see, that means filling up the whole screen with icons, shortcuts, and widgets for things that I use regularly that make my life better. So as you can see in the top left-hand corner, we have my screen time widget because we don't want to be spending our lives on our phones. I like having this front and center because it just makes me more conscious of how much time I am spending on my phone. It's so visible. It's so in front of me. If I'm seeing a figure like you've already been on your phone for three hours, I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to be on here anymore. I used to have this widget on my actual widgets page, but I never looked at it there. Having it on my home screen makes it so much more visible to me. Next to my screen time widget, I have my filming shortcuts. This is a shortcut that takes me to a Notion page. If I click on it, it opens up a little content schedule Kanban. I can scroll to the to record section and then I can click on any of those videos and I can start recording. Usually when I'm filming, I have a script that I follow, not to a T, but I have a rough outline and I don't want it to take me five clicks to get to the page with the script on it. Hence why I have that shortcut. I really do think that your home screen should contain shortcuts that make the things that you do regularly easier. Then I have a shortcut that takes me to my Notion errands list. So this is just a one page view of all of the errands that I have on my to-do list. I categorize my to-dos by context. One of those contexts is errands. That way when I am out and about, I'm at the shopping center, I can pick up my errands list and I can go, what is it that I need to buy? And I can go and tick off all of those items in the one go. It's a good way to encourage myself to batch tasks and having that shortcut on my home screen, it makes it more likely that I'm going to actually look at that list when I'm out and about rather than having to take, yeah, five steps just to get to my errands list. I also have a link to another Notion page, which is my IG stories page. I talked about this in my how I organize and plan my content video. I have a list of Instagram story ideas that I like to put up. This is a recent addition to my homepage so that whenever I'm like, oh, I want to post on Instagram, what should I post? I have access to this shortcut icon that I can click on. I can go, okay, what is on there? I have a conversation starter question and then I can open my threads app, which is right next to it. And I can post a story. So threads is an app by Instagram. Honestly, this is not a fantastic app, but what it does is it allows you to post Instagram stories without actually being on Instagram. If I want to post a story to Instagram, I don't want to post that story and then get sucked into watching everyone else's stories that posted in the last hour and then find myself scrolling through reels. I just want to post an Instagram story and be done with it. So previously when you open reels, it would open straight to the camera page, which is what I really liked about it. But obviously that's not what they want the function of reels to be. So now it opens straight to your chat page. I hate this change because now it means that I see all of my inbox queries. So what I did was I just pinned all of my friends to the top. I don't usually message my friends on Instagram. I'm more of a messenger kind of gal. So I pin those people to the top. That way I don't see all of the messages and I'm not like, oh God, I need to click into every single one of them. And I choose not to scroll down and click on the little camera icon and make my story. Obviously I don't always use threads to post to Instagram because sometimes it's just not the most functional way to do it, but it's my preferred way of interacting on Instagram if I can get away with it. Then down to the left, you've got obviously just a link to Notion. It'll just take me to Notion in general. I feel like I have to have that there. In intention, of course, we have a whole library of meditation, of book guides, a bunch of reset content, and it's constantly being built upon. This is all content that I create. It is sort of an addition to the content that I create on YouTube. So I create a lot of content on here and I talk a lot about what you should do and intention. It makes my content even more actionable. So then I have Google Keep. So Google Keep is where I store notes that I don't intend on keeping. So these are just like one and 
done notes that I might make as I'm leaving the house and I'm asking, hey, do you want me to pick anything up from the grocery store? I would note that in Google Keep. It's very much for quick on the go notes that are not reference items. These aren't action items. These are just like random things that I need in the moment that I will then disregard. Then I have Spotify because we all need Spotify on our home screen. And then my favorite part of my phone right now, which is my capture button. So to take you on a bit of a journey, this button has evolved. Having a capture tool is about having an easy way to write down your thoughts your ideas, your to-dos, any decisions that you need to make, literally anything that comes up in your mind that you want to store and you want to reference at a later point. So for me, that's usually to-dos, content ideas, any notes and thoughts that I'm like, ooh, I want to elaborate on that or think on that further. Previously, I used to just chuck all of these into the app called Things, which is a very popular productivity to-do list manager app. But then I would transfer everything into my main app, Notion, which you've seen that I obviously use a lot in my day-to-day -day life. An ongoing struggle that I have had is how can I capture things directly in Notion in a quick and easy way because I adore Notion like love it adore it but it opens slowly it doesn't seem like much but just opening Notion it takes a few seconds which is a few seconds too many when it comes to a capture tool when I am walking in the shopping center and I have an idea I don't want to have to wait a few seconds I want to be able to open something instantly and capture it and the ideal is for that to directly go into Notion rather than having to put it in things and then transfer it into Notion later in the day or later in the week. We want a smooth workflow. So if I click onto this capture shortcut, it takes me directly to drafts. The only reason that this is a shortcut is because I like the idea of having the bigger icon. I want it to be really clear, really visible, zero friction. So as you can see, this opens directly to a page that you can type on. So there's no friction and opens immediately. You start typing whatever your thought, idea, action item might be. And then there is this little button in the top right hand corner that you can click. And from there, I've configured it so that I can send things straight to Notion. I'll deep dive into how I set this up at the end of the video because I'm sure not everyone wants to sit through and watch that. But basically I can click and say, yep, this is an action item. It immediately sends that into my Notion inbox. So you can see I've got an inbox set up. Here's a note that I want to send to Notion. And then when I do my weekly reset, I can clarify that thought a little bit better. I might tag it with a context or a level of urgency, but it was super easy for me to capture and super easy for me to send to that database. Most of the things that I capture on a regular basis can be categorized into one of these areas. So it's either an action item, it's an idea for content, it's a fleeting note. So something that I'm like, oh, I really like to look into that. That's a question that I want to follow up or research into. I might have an article link that I want to store in my learning library, or I could even want to add an event, which is something that you can do directly within drafts. So I could type picnic with Sam, the title of the event that I'm organizing. I could click onto the little action section, click add event. It's going to come up with a little page for me to chuck in all of the details and then click add. So you can really use this as your all-in-one capture tool. Most of these actions send things straight into a Notion database because that's where I store most of my stuff. But recently I've been talking about the book, How to Take Smart Notes, and I've been putting together a little bit of a system outside of Notion, which is something that I deliberated on for a long time. I was like, do I want to introduce another app into my life? But at the moment it's feeling like the best decision. So I have a fleeting note action, which actually sends things to Obsidian, which is something that I am working with when it comes to note taking. But there's a little script that runs in the background that connects those things. So I can truly capture everything in drafts. When I say that this makes me happy, it makes me like unbelievably happy because I've been searching for a solution like this for so long and I'm so happy that I found it. Below that, I just have a Google Calendar widget. So that has the calendar. Right now it has absolutely no events because we're in lockdown. But usually if I had events, that would show on the right hand side of the screen. I love having my calendar visible in any way, shape or form because I am a shocker when it comes to remembering what's on my calendar. So I just make it as visible as possible. So on the next page of my phone, this is kind of my vision and my goals page. And I intentionally wedge this in between my main homepage, which is like functional, makes life super easy for me, makes my routines and my general regularly performed tasks easier. And then on the other side of this page is my apps page. So apps that I access quite regularly. That way I am forced to scroll past this page. Those images become burned into my brain and my goals themselves become burned into my brain. That's what we want. So at the top of the page, I have a text-based widget, and this is actually from the app called Snip Notes. I don't use Snip Notes other than for the purpose of creating little text-based widgets. So as you can see at the top, I have my Life Map goals. Life Map Collective is my planner brand where I sell absolutely amazing planners that change your life in 13-week periods at a time. And in those 13-week periods, you set particular goals. So I like to have those goals front and center. Usually you have a goal that you are focusing on the most, 
and then you have two goals that are kind of your mini goals. And then at the bottom of the page, I have a big Pinterest widget, which connects to my vision board that's sitting in Pinterest, where I pinned a whole bunch of things that align with my values that I want to bring into my life, the kind of people I want to bring into my life, the connections, the vibes, the energy. It's all there on that Pinterest widget and it appears on my phone. I think this switches up hourly, so I'm constantly seeing different images. This is a page to inspire, to keep me focused and to keep my vision front and center. On the next page of my phone, I have my actual app screens. So this is all of my folders with all of my apps nicely organized. And then I also have a shortcuts widget. So a lot of these shortcuts actually just take me directly to opening apps that are organized within these folders. But I didn't want those app icons to be out because it doesn't look nice visually. That's the main reason. <laughs> I don't love the orange color, but it's certainly better than having a bunch of multicolored apps just looking ugh on this screen. I'm gonna quickly walk you through each folder and what I have in it. So firstly, my utilities, nothing super interesting here. Then we have my read and my listen folder. First up is Libby. I've talked about Libby extensively before. It allows you to borrow library books digitally if your local library is connected to it. And a lot of local libraries are particularly, I would say in light of the pandemic, they'd all be connecting to Libby. It just makes the most sense. There are other library reading apps, but this app is just so much better. It's superior to all of the other library apps that exist. Then there is the Medium app. Honestly, I don't use this that much. It's a place where writers publish online articles and occasionally I'll come across a Medium article on the internet and I'll wanna read it in the Medium app because it's a better reading experience. Then I have Pocket. I used to use this more than I do now and now I prefer to save articles that I want to read within Notion. But Pocket is great. It saves articles that you wanna read later and if you're sitting on the train or you just have a moment of spare time and you wanna read some articles, you can hop into the Pocket app and read all of those articles that you've saved. Then I have the Kindle app. This is the app that I read all of my books on. I have the Goodreads app, but I also have the Storygraph app. So I'm not a dedicated user of Goodreads. Like I don't rate all of my books or anything like that. I pretty much use it purely for book recommendations because I'm constantly searching for good fantasy books that don't make me want to like roll my eyes. That's been my big problem lately. I'm just like, I can't buy into the books that I'm reading and it's killing me. So I've been using Goodreads to find book recommendations, but then I heard about Storygraphs, which is a new app and their big selling point is a book app that's not created by Amazon. So we like that. And also it's all about how good their recommendations are. So I'm super excited. I've literally just started using it. So if you log into my account, it actually has a recommendation for a book that I just read that I enjoyed. <laughs> I haven't dived into the recommendations just yet, but as I read them, I'll let you know how we go. They all look really spot on. I really like fantasy books, but like I said, fantasy books that don't make me roll my eyes. They need to be written well. They need to be paced well. They need to be character development. I love good character development. If there's romance, oof, I hate immediate romance. There's a word for it. I don't know what it is. I think in the book community, it's called Insta Love. I hate it. And all of the books that I've been reading have been like Insta Love, cheesy writing, everything's way too coincidental. Anyways, I'm, I've am i just been on a bit of a bad spell with books recently. Hence why I downloaded this app. And the recommendations look legit so far. Then there is the Readwise app. I've talked about this app before. It's a way to store and remind yourself of the passages that you highlight within books, as well as the things that you highlight on Twitter, within articles that you read, etc. So if I'm having a day where I can't read a little bit of a book, what I do is I grab my Readwise app and then I open my daily review and then I just review all the passages that I've previously highlighted from books. You just swipe through a bunch of highlights that it's curated, that are randomized every single day. You can choose to discard them if you don't like them. You can choose to add additional notes to them if you want to react to each note and elaborate upon it. And then when you get to the end, it gives you a little yes, good job you, and you can choose to continue or you can just disregard. Readwise, at least for the good features, is a paid service. There's nothing that interesting in my finance folder except for the app Raise. It's like an easy way to get into investing without really stepping into the investing world. I contribute a little bit of money every single week and it's slowly building up that little money pile. Pretty slowly, but look, we're getting there. Then I have my file storage folder. Nothing to see there. My work folder. In my work folder, we have Airtasker. So Airtasker is an app where you can hire people to do random jobs for you. I occasionally do that when I need people to read over stuff like the life map. Or if I need tech help with things, I'll chuck that on Airtasker. Or if I just have personal stuff, I'll also put it on there. In my services folder, honestly, I don't know if these all categorize into services, particularly maps, but they felt right in my mind. I was like, yes, these work together. 
in my productivity folder. We've got the clock app. I don't use my phone for my alarm clock, but what I will use this for is if I'm having like a nap during the day, I'll set a little time on. We've got things which I don't use any longer. My system with drafts is new, so I haven't quite deleted it yet. It's really hard to part. We've been together for a long time. We've got Obsidian, which is my new app where I'm trying to build a bit of a note-taking system. Google Calendar and drafts, which I've already talked about. In my create and edit folder, we start with InShot, which is an app that you can use to edit any Instagram reels. So I've uploaded quite a few Instagram reels onto my Instagram, as well as some TikToks. Look, I'm not killing it on the TikTok front, but we're trying, kind of. <laughs> and in that app, you can edit things a little bit more easily than the in-app editors and do things that you might not be able to do in an in-app editor. Then I've got Snapseed. This is like my first point when I go to edit a photo, I'll chuck it into Snapseed, make things lighter, brighter, more sharp, better. And then I'd move it into an app like Lightroom or sometimes into Visco. The next app is Skitch. So most often I use Skitch on my computer, but sometimes if I need to send someone instructions for whatever reason, I can do that using the Skitch app. It has the ability to put all of these bits of text, arrows, and there are a ton of tools. And then you can send those photos to people. The other app of interest in this folder is LensBuddy. This is my favorite app for taking Instagram photos. With this app, I can chuck my phone in a little phone stand. I can set it to say, yes, I want 30 photos, 60 photos, 120 photos. And I want those photos to be taken two seconds apart, five seconds apart, etc. I click the go button and then it is taking photos. This app has been game changing when it comes to Instagram photos specifically. Like that is what I use it for. But also with photos with friends, if you want to take multiple photos, but you don't want to be like, let me take another, let me take another. Just open the lens body app, have it said to take like 10 photos or something. And then just, you know, go around, take a bunch of photos. Bounce back, which opens up Intention. Intention has a good bounce back guide within it. Take IG photos takes you to the app that I just opened. We've got naps. This automatically just sets a 30 minute timer for a nap. This takes me to my marriage meeting or relationship meeting page, which I have a guide for on my Intention app. We've got a Readwise review shortcut, which, which just takes you to Readwise. This takes me to my shopping list directly. And then we've got Open Keep. The next page that I have on my phone is a new one, but it kicks off with a whole list of my energy boundaries when it comes to social media. So I'm trying to take my energy and social media more seriously. I've recently gone through a bit of a slump, wasn't feeling so good and found my boundaries with social media slipping. Cause it is a bit of a vicious cycle. When you feel bad, you end up going on social media more and then social media makes you feel worse and the cycle continues. I know that when I have social media boundaries, my life is better. There are so many thoughts on social media and the impact that social media has on you as a person. Some people are like, no, it's not social media. It's you. Some people like social media is killing you. I sit somewhere in the middle and that is what I try to work with. So on this page, I have my little energy boundaries. I have a statement about what I use social media for. This is the level that we're at these days with social media. And then just a list of how I want to use each app. So TikTok, it's my weekend treat. I use it on Saturday, Sunday, pretty much because I like TikTok. Often I feel like TikTok makes me think critically more than I usually would because there are so many different takes from so many different creators and I'm constantly having my beliefs questioned. I guess it depends on what side of TikTok you're on, but that is a good side of TikTok. I like it. Instagram is something that I like to use after lunchtime. My email and creator studio, which is where I see all of your comments is something that I don't want to see in the morning. Something I found with myself is I'm more vulnerable of a morning. And if I see like a negative comment and it's 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm like, oh, I feel like attacked. If I see that same comment at like 1 p.m., the reaction just isn't the same. And that's why I like to have timed boundaries around those particular apps. So then I just have my little connect folder. So I have Bumble, that's for Bumble BFF, just FYI. Me and Luke are good. Bumble BFF has been a really fun journey as well. And then on the second page, I have apps that I really just don't want to see. So I have my energy boundaries right there with those social media apps that I want boundaries around underneath it. So this is very much my don't go here too often, but when you do, the boundaries around it are very clear page. So now for the Notion portion of my community, I'm gonna show you how I set up my drafts to Notion action items. Honestly, it's quick, it's simple. I don't think it is the ultimate solution. I want drafts to have an integrated solution. I think it should. And with the API having been released, hopefully they'll get there soon. But for now, this is how I'm working with it. So there's a service that I use called blockface.dev that allows you to forward important emails to Notion. There's a free plan that allows you to forward things to just one database, which is what most people would need. I pay for the one up tier, which is where you can have three emails 
emails that are connected to three different Notion databases. So the way that blockbase.dev works is you would connect a database firstly. So you might be like, okay, my master list, that's the database that I want everything to go to. Then you would assign an email to that database. So Michelle's master list at blockbase.dev. And then whenever you email that email address that you've been given, you create a new entry in that database. So how I've made that work with drafts is if you go into drafts, you go into the actions, you would just create a new action. You'd name it whatever you want. So send to master list. You'd click on these steps. You'll scroll down to Gmail and you want to use Gmail as opposed to the iPhone mail app. And the reason for that is when you use Gmail, it allows you to bypass an opening of an email composer. Whereas when you use the usual mail app, it's gonna ask you to compose a full email and then press send again. You wanna remove as many steps as possible, hence why you would use Gmail. You would add your email address so that it's just always there. So it would be Michelle's master list at blogface.dev. And then you go save and exit. So then you would just type in your note, you go send to master list and it would just auto send to that email. Without it opening an email composer, without anything else happening, with no other steps, it's gonna send it immediately to your Notion database. It's so simple. There are other ways to set this up. So August Bradley has a video on how to set up drafts and Zapier. That it auto goes into a database, that's another good way to do it. And I think now that the API is out, or I hope, the drafts will develop a way that it's just integrated automatically. It doesn't cost additional money for the emails that you buy in blockface.dev. But for now, that's my solution. And check out August Bradley's video below for an alternative way to link things up to Zapier and make things work that way because there are always other ways to do it. If you liked this video, you'll probably like my playlist of videos where I talk about things like my top apps and how I use them, my Notion setup and how it all works and helps to make my life better and easier, etc, etc. I'm gonna have that playlist linked on the screen as well as down below. I appreciate you guys so very much and I will see you soon.